Over the last few weeks, I've received quite a few comments and questions related to circles and particularly how to plot them within Desmos. Now, if you've never used Desmos before, it's a great tool to use in the classroom. I use it all the time. And in fact, with my year seven class, it's one of their favorite homeworks where they come up with lots of different designs. So go to desmos.com and then click on start graphing. So this is the default screen and what you might see, you might have your keyboard showing. I tend not to use that, so I'll just hide that. On the left hand side is where I input the equations and obviously I have my Cartesian plane over on the right, my coordinate grids here. Now we're going to be drawing circles and obviously the general form for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. So let me just go ahead and pop one of those in. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, for my radius, I'm going to choose four for my radius, so four squared. Now, if you're not sure how to get the squareds, you have to hold down your shift key and press six. So I'll do that with a four. So I've entered the four, I press shift six. It will let me enter the two for the squared and then I press my tab key to come back down again. Hopefully that's fairly self-explanatory. Okay, so I've got my circle centered at zero, zero with a radius of four. Now the questions I've been asked relate to, well, how do you move the circle away from that origin? So if I want to have a horizontal or a vertical shift, or indeed a diagonal shift, which would be a combination of horizontal and vertical. Well, let me go ahead and duplicate this equation here. I'll copy it. And the way I copy it is I go to the little settings wheel, a gear wheel here, click on the copy or duplicate icon. So now I've got two copies and I'm just going to change the color of this second one to blue and click on done. So now I have two circles, one on top of the other. And if I just hide and show the blue one, there we go. Okay, so what I want to do with this is I want to have a horizontal shift. I want to shift this so the center is at negative four, zero. Now, because it's a horizontal shift, this is the X axis, I have to go to the X term. And the first thing I do is I wrap it in brackets. Okay, now I've got the X term. I want to shift it to the left and it seems a bit counterintuitive. If I'm doing a shift to the left, I actually have to add a number. And obviously I want to add four to get the center at negative four, zero. Similarly, if I want to shift to the right, I'll just make a copy of this. I'll change the color to the orange color. And instead of adding four, I would subtract four. And there we have the three circles. So the horizontal shift, fairly easy. Now, similarly for the uh, vertical shift, all you're going to do is to adjust the Y term. So let me just turn these off. I'll go to my first equation and make a copy of that one. Call this one blue color. Okay, so a vertical shift in the Y direction, and I want to shift in an upwards direction. I'm going to have a center at zero, two. So I'll go to my Y term, brackets around the Y term or parentheses if, if you're in the US. And I want to shift upwards, so that means I'll have to subtract. So I'm going to subtract two. And similar, if I want to shift down the ways, I would have to add a number. So hopefully that's fairly self-explanatory. Now I'm hoping this is fairly obvious, but if I want to shift in a diagonal direction, well, that's a combination of a horizontal and vertical movement. So I'm just shifting the center of that circle. Let me go ahead and do that. I'll make a copy of this one. I'll change the color to green. And let's say this time I want to shift this circle so the center is at negative four, two. So negative four, two. So in the X direction, I'm going to have to add four. And for the Y term, I'm going to have to subtract two. And therefore I've shifted the circle to have a center at negative four, two. Now, the other questions I get asked relate to semicircles. How do you draw a semicircle? Well, let's say I just want to have the bottom half of this circle here. 
Well, I know it's to do with the y values. So in other words, y is less than zero all the way along here. At the top, y would be greater than zero. So what I need to do is restrict the y values to be less than zero. And all I need to do there is in curly braces is I put y is less than zero. And there I have my semicircle. Now, if I want to have a quarter circle, let's say I just want this right hand side here. Well, obviously I'm still leaving the restriction on the Y, but I also need to restrict the X to be greater than zero. It's all the positive values for the X. So again, go back to my equation in curly braces, X is going to be greater than zero. And there I have my quarter circle. The next thing I can do is obviously combine the shifting of the center with the restrictions on the X and Y values. So let me turn this equation off and turn this one back on. Now let's say I just want this part of the circle here. Well, I know the X values lie between negative eight and negative six. So let me put those in. So curly braces, negative eight, less than X, less than negative six. So now I need to restrict the Y values to be greater than two. So another set of curly braces and Y is greater than two. And there we have the part of the circle that are required. I hope that's answered most of the questions that were posed over the last few weeks. But if you do have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd highly recommend you have a little explore on Desmos. As I say, it's a great tool to use in the classroom and let me know how you get on. If you found this video useful, then please leave a quick thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos.